Mr. Thompson. Welcome to another week of remote learning. For today's lesson, we're going to be determining the impact of rhyme, repetition, and alliteration on a text, specifically poetry. So this standard for today, we're going to apply it 100% to poetry. So for the lesson, you're going to need access to Google Classroom and a computer, smartphone, or tablet to complete your work on. Key points for today's lesson. Today we're going to be working on a lesson about sound devices such as rhyme, repetition, and alliteration. Rhythm is the beat created by the pattern of stressed and unstressed syllables. So in a poem, when we're looking for the rhyme scheme or the rhythm, we always want to look at the end of each line of poetry. Authors use repeated words or phrases to emphasize their importance and make sure they stay in the minds of the readers. So as we read, we're going to annotate these poems and look for words or phrases that the author is repeating. Generally, when they're doing that, they want to emphasize those lines, so they're really important to, to notice and to annotate. Rhymes create a musical rhythm that is pleasant to read aloud. Understanding sound devices will help you hear how words can flow in a way that's music to your ears. This will give you a deeper understanding and appreciation for poetry. So mastering the skill is going to make us appreciate poetry more, and it's also going to help us better unpack and understand them, especially when we come across tricky poetry um, texts on the SVAC. So, essential vocab for today's lesson. We've got rhyme, repetition, and alliteration. So, rhyme is the repetition of sounds at the end of words. These give poems a musical quality and create unity between ideas. Repetition is the repeated use of a sound, word, phrase, or line. Alliteration is the repetition of consonant sounds at the beginning of words. So if we think of like a tongue twister, probably the most famous tongue twister is Sally sells seashells by the seashore. That's a perfect example of repetition, of, of alliteration. The consonant S is being repeated at the beginning of each word. All right, for our model today, we're gonna to start with this poem, Night Rescue by B.B. Nolan. So as I read, I'm gonna be thinking about the rhyme scheme. I'm gonna be looking to see which words rhyme in the poem. I'm gonna be looking for alliteration. So again, repeated consonant sounds at the beginning of words. Um, and I'm also going to be looking to see if there's any repetition in the poem. Are there any lines that the author's repeating? So here we go. Night Rescue by B.B. Nolan. It is just a small storm, the weatherman said. So my sleepy sisters slipped off to bed. Then, just a small storm, shot a bolt from the sky. Our house shook from the jolt. Wires started to fry. Soon, swirlings of smoke sailed away down the hall. But brave heroes came quickly and rescued us all. So if we look at my annotations here, okay, what I did was I underlined um, every time the poet used alliteration. So here we've got small storm, okay, again the consonant S is being repeated. We have sleepy sisters slipped, again S is being repeated, small storm again, and swirlings of smoke sailed away, again consonant S being repeated. Now if I think about the rhyme scheme, uh, the way that I annotated this is I color-coded it. So when I went through the poem, I, I noticed that the first two lines said and bed rhyme. So I color-coded those red. Okay, so we got said, bed. And I go down to the next line, sky and fry. Now, sky and fry rhyme, but sky doesn't rhyme with bed or said. So what this is looking like is an A a, B, B, rhyme scheme so far. Now I'm going to look at these lines and see if these rhyme with spry or bet. Okay, so I got Paul and all. Paul does not rhyme with fry. Paul does not rhyme with bet. So this is a new rhyme scheme. So I'm going to label this C C. So I've got A A B B C C. Okay. Now identifying rhyme schemes like that is a skill that we've talked about. Um, a lot this school year. So this should be a review for you. 
So, um, all my annotations, I got all my annotations down. Now I'm gonna put them into this graphic organizer so I can really look at um, how the poet is using sound devices. So, um, rhyming words, like we said, we got said, bed, bolt, jolt, sky, fry, haul, and all, okay? Impact on meaning here. They connect ideas and create unity and structure, okay? So poets use rhymes to infuse meaning into their poem. Here, the rhyme scheme connects all the ideas and ties the poem together, okay? Alliteration in the poem, just like I underlined, we have small storm, sleepy slister slipped, soon swirling, and smoke sail. The impact on meaning, using the same sound, calls attention to those words, okay? So the author wants us to, to notice these words because this is where most of the action is taking place in, this, in the poem, okay? He uses alliteration to describe the sisters, the storm, and um, the smoke sailing, okay? So here we get really, really uh, vivid pictures in our mind as we're reading. All right, next poem. Now, this is a poem that we've already read together in class. We read this during the Frederick Douglass unit. Um, we're gonna read it again, and we're gonna look for how the poet uses sound devices. So, Harriet Tubman by Eloise Greenfield, okay? Um, now, I'm gonna read the poem like this, just so you can see this is in the same order. This is the first stanza of the poem, this is the second stanza of the poem. Here we go. Harriet Tubman didn't take no stuff, wasn't scared of nothing neither. Didn't come in this world to be no slave, and wasn't going to stay one either. Farewell, she sang to her friends one night. She was mighty sad to leave him, but she ran away that dark hot night, ran looking for her freedom. She ran to the woods, she ran through the woods with the slave catchers right behind her, and she kept on going till she got to the north where those mean men couldn't find her. All right, so um, here's my annotation for sound devices I found in the poem. So I underlined the use of alliteration. So we've got nothing, neither, and mean men, okay? Um, in terms of a rhyme scheme, we've got neither, either, and then behind her and find her. And for repetition, the author kind of repeats this idea in the second stanza. She ran to the woods and she ran through the woods. So the author is um, repeating this idea of her running to the woods and running through the woods, that must be a really important idea that adds meaning to the poem. So let's see. All right, how does a poet use rhyme, alliteration, and repetition in her description of Harriet Tubman? All right, so I've got this nice little graphic organizer. Again, we're gonna be looking for rhyming words, alliteration, and repetition. Um, I'm gonna put my examples, all of my annotation, okay, in this middle section. And um, after I fill that out, I'm gonna analyze what's the impact on the meaning. So, rhyming words, neither, either, behind her, find her, okay? Impact on meaning is they help create unity in the poem and give the poem a musical quality. Alliteration, nothing, neither, and mean men. They add to the poem's rhythm and help readers imagine that Harriet Tubman is the one talking. And then repetition, ran to the woods, ran through the woods. It emphasizes that she had to run for a long time to get away from the slave catchers. Okay? Now, uh, this is the final stanza of the poem. Okay? So just read along with me as I read out loud. Nineteen times she went back south to get 300 others. She ran for her freedom 19 time, times to save black sisters and brothers. Harriet Tubman didn't take no stuff, wasn't scared of nothing neither, didn't come in this world to be no slave, and didn't stay one either, and she didn't stay one either. So when I look at this, I notice some repetition in 19 times, okay? I, I notice rhymes in others, brothers, and then down here we have neither, either, again, okay? So this is gonna bring us to our check for understanding, or CFD, okay? And just so you guys can see all my annotation here, again, 19 times I underlined. Um,
because this shows repetition. Others, brothers, neither, either. That's the rhyme within the poem. And then um, I underline the last two lines because this shows repetition, okay? So, check for understanding today. Which choice best states the impact that the repeated phrase 19 times has on the poet's message, okay? So if we go back into the poem, we can see 19 times she went back south to get 300 others. She ran for her freedom 19 times to save black sisters and brothers. So why do you think the author wants you to focus on that phrase 19 times? Why is it integral to the message that they're trying to create with this poem? What I want you guys to do is pause the video right now, answer this CFU, and when you come back on, I'm gonna share with you the answer. So pause your computer now. Okay, welcome back. Now we're gonna go over the CFU. So, which choice best states the impact that the repeated phrase 19 times has on the poet's message? Correct answer is gonna be D. The repetition of the phrase highlights Tubman's determination and courage, okay? We see that 19 times she went back to the South. She risked her life. She went into a dangerous situation just to help others. The author repeats that phrase 19 times because he really wants you to see how determined and courageous Harriet Tubman was. Okay, for today's guided practice, okay, you're gonna be reading a poem by Robert Frost, okay? As you read, think about how the poet uses rhyme repetition and alliteration in creative ways. Think about how these techniques add meaning to the poem, okay? So what I want you guys to do is read the poem at least twice, annotate, annotate examples of rhyme, repetition, and alliteration. Think about how do sound devices add to the meaning of the entire poem. Okay, so for today, uh, we talked about sound devices, specifically rhyme, repetition, and alliteration. Um, Rhythm is the beat created by the pattern of stressed and unstressed syllables. Authors use repeated words or phrases to emphasize their importance and make sure they stay in the minds of the reader. Rhymes create a musical pattern that is pleasant to read aloud. And understanding sound devices will help you hear how words can flow in a way that's music to your ears. This will give you a deeper understanding and appreciation for poetry. And it's also gonna help you with your comprehension and understanding when you're working on reading and interpreting difficult poems. So work through the next three questions in your document and submit when complete, okay? The first two are SBAC aligned questions and they're multiple choice. Uh, the third question is short answer. Please respond in at least five sentences. So let's have a great day of learning and thank you guys so much. I'll see you for Friday's lesson.